Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today for um, the league's um, fireside chat. I realize there's no fires places. We are in um, Southern California, but um, we're going to call it that um, because we're looking forward to having just a very casual, open um, discussion in honor of Black History Month. And we are so happy that you guys were able to join us. Thank you so much for taking the time to do that. And what I, yeah, so what I'd like to start out with is just taking a minute to have each of you just tell us a little bit um, about yourselves and uh, what credit union you're from and maybe how long you've been there. And I'll uh, go ahead, Ashley, and start with you. Okay, well, thank you so much for the invitation, Connie. It is a pleasure to be amongst um, all of you great women and I look up to each and every one of you. I am Ashley Franklin, and I am a Vice President of Branch Operations for Schools First Federal Credit Union, and I have had the pleasure of serving members for 10 years now. That's great. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Ashley, and again, thank you for being here. Um, Lisa? Hi, well, welcome, everybody. My name is Lisa Roundtree. I am with Stanford Federal Credit Union here in the Bay Area. I've been with this credit union just a moment, coming <laughs> from my prior credit union about five years and in the industry about 20. So I am the senior vice president, chief people officer here at the credit union. Glad to be here. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, Marvell. Yes, hi everyone. I'm Marvell Ford. I'm with California Credit Union and thank you for inviting us to this forum. Um, I've been in the industry over 40 years with the credit union 24 years. And as a senior vice president for community and um, legislative advocacy is where I've spent most of my time lately. And I've been involved with everything from the community outreach to branch operations. I came in as a branch manager early on. I've been in lending. So it's been a pretty big uh, broad spectrum of uh, duties, but it's been a pleasure to be in the movement. Oh, thank you guys so much. Um, we're going to just jump in and again, um, just would like you guys to share your thoughts on any of the questions and um, we will just jump in. Uh, oh, before I start, I did assume that I guess that everybody knew me. So let me just introduce myself, <laughs> um, Tanya Wheatley. Um, I'm with the California Credit Union League, and I have been with the leagues for um, going on 17 years. And uh, I'm in the area of credit union solutions and also membership. So I get the pleasure of um, interacting on a daily basis with all of you, our members, and, um, and actually know all of you guys. So I'm going to jump in and um, start out with our first question. And that is, how do you think credit unions um, and the movement can promote inclusion and uh, equality in the workplace and the community? So what more do you think we can do in the industry um, in that area? And uh, I'll go ahead, um, Lisa, and start out with you. Yeah, you know, I think that's a great question. And when I think about it, the first thing that I think about is there needs to be a recognition that more inclusion and equality is actually needed. Um, I think that when there are no overt issues or conflicts, it's easy to believe that everything is okay, but we don't have the awareness um, that of how things are done and, and how they might impact other people. Uh, so, and, and certainly what's in the best interest of those people around us. So I think having an ongoing active awareness program that is fun and interactive that in a more structured but casual environment reminds people of the importance of inclusion and the importance of, of equity is, is so important. Yeah. Um, I agree. Thank you so <laughs> much. And uh, that is an excellent point as far as it being something that's ongoing. Um, thanks for sharing that with us. And um, Ashley, I'm, I'm going to go to you because I know you deal with um, 
the entirety of branches for schools mm -hmm. first. That's a very big job and mm -hmm. um, would love to get your input on um, what can be done more in your opinion. You know, I, I completely agree with Lisa. I, I think that the credit union movement at large is just well positioned to be able to provide an environment of inclusivity and, and equality. I think that it is inherent in who we are and that secret sauce of people helping people here to serve and not to judge. Um, the things that we do from low to no fees, um, member ownership, volunteer board of directors of the people, for the people, by the people. Yep. Um, I think it's just inherent in credit union, um, credit union, the, the movement at large that says it is an environment that should be inclusive um, and equal. I think that investing in our members and in our team members creates this sense of community and then that community creates curiosity and then curiosity will create um, inclusion. So um, just by virtue of, of being a credit union and what we stand for, I think um, we're poised to be able to bring that to the point of the industry at large. Excellent. I, I definitely uh agree there's that natural connection. So um, that is an excellent point. Um, I, I think what Marvell, what I'd like to do is move to the next question because I think it's such a, uh, a great fit for you as well. Um, and that's just taking it more into the financial literacy and financial well-being. Um, what opportunities do you think exist for credit unions to make a greater impact in this particular area? And it's a kind of similar, but just a little bit more on the literacy literacy and um, financial well-being. Any oh, thoughts on that? Certainly. Yeah, so what I thought about initially just reviewing the question was I said, I always want us to remember our origin. So where did we start? Um, and we were formed because there was a need in a community. And I think we sometimes move away from that messaging is to say, remember, this is how we were formed. And think about all of the credit unions and its formation. So I think we have to start there with, with our true roots. Uh, the other thing is you have to partner with communities to continue to move this forward. Uh, it is a continual process of learning. So I like the fact that we can always say that we always are in the position of learning and educating our, our members, our staff, and also the outreach to community. And also speak to your community leaders. You can't do it without the leadership of the community. They look to us um, as that voice in the community because we represent their constituents. So I think it's a perfect place for us to say, you know, we can do it through our storytelling. We can do it through our origin. And I think that's what's going to continue to move us forward and, and, and keep it relevant as well. Yeah, very true. That's such a good way to put it. I mean, I, I definitely think that um, we're looked to um, as a community in, in that area. Um, thanks so much. Um, Lisa, any thoughts on that one? Yeah, you know, I, I totally agree with what Marvell is saying. And I, I, I really like the fact that she talked about storytelling um, and just information sharing about how financial well-being is relatable. I think that one thing that kind of happens in the, the community, especially when we're talking about Black financial literacy is the information really needs to be relatable in order for people to see that it's achievable. You know, we, we hear stats that, you know, let's take home ownership, for example. We hear stats about how white home ownership in California is about, you know, 63% and Latino it's about 48%, but with Black ownership in California, it's only 36%. And a lot of times I think that our communication kind of stops there, but I think that the next thing that we have to do is get out to those people like Marvell was talking about, and then talk about that next question, which is now how can you be a part of that 36% and to help raise that number to something even greater. Um, I think we need to really help visualize that path for people so that they can understand that this is achievable, but it means you know, taking these steps, whether those steps are, you know, making sure that you pay your bills on time or, you know, whatever it happens to be, but really walk them through the steps so that people see that 
financial literacy and well-being is within their reach and it's achievable for them. <clears throat> Great. Thank you so much. And yeah, interesting uh, statistic. Um, thanks for sharing that. But just even knowing that really speaks to some of the points that you're making that we need to you know, have a bar that we want to hit and do what we need to do to uh, get above it. And uh, yeah, that is, that is excellent. Um, Ashley. You uh, mentioned um, visualizing. And I think that that is where our opportunity is as African Americans in the credit union space is that we need to increase our participation from members to the board. If I see you, then I'm more apt to participate. And part of the challenge is that we don't often see me. And so I may not know that this is acceptable to me. Um, if I'm able to see a branch manager that looks like me, perhaps I'm more inclined to come in and participate, which means that my financial well-being is going to go up. Right. Because that's what we do at credit unions. And often when you I don't know what the percentage of African American participation is in the credit union movement. I presume it is low, and that's why organizations like the ANCC exist. So if we increase the number of team members, then the number of members would thereby also increase. And so I think that that's where our opportunity is in the credit union space, particularly for us as African American leaders, mm -hmm. to try and get more people that look like us in the movement yes. so that they we can be overall excuse me, overall experience better financial well-being. It's interesting right. you should say that. Um, you don't mind if I chime in? Oh, no, please. I was just so going to say this. early. It's, yes. um, you're taking me back some time, Ashley, in saying that, because when I was in the branches, um, new to the credit union movement, one of the interesting phenomenons for me was I couldn't believe how many African-American individuals would come up to me. Yes, I'm in charge of the location, but the significance to them was you have arrived. Mm -hmm. So to them, we got there. How did I get there? But they they celebrated that in mm -hmm. a sense that I to me it was my natural course for movement is where I wanted to be and continue to grow. But when someone points it out and the significance to them, you made a very valid point because we don't. I don't know that I always see it that way. I know when it's brought to my attention. Because I'm thinking I'm just doing the job, the role of the uh, what I was hired for, but they see it very differently. When I'm in the inner cities, which I've worked for many, many years, there's a difference. There's a celebration that's going on that we don't know. Um, I'll say somewhat silently because they go back and they tell the community, by the way, we have this new leader at this branch. Mm -hmm. and, and they're wanting us to embrace them, I would say, definitely, but to really they're talking about embracing me and us. And so that's pretty in excite insightful. So I love that you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. That that is excellent. We you got I just um some of the points that I got, and I'm wondering if there's any other um, Lisa you might have to share, but talking about the fact that one of the ways to make sure that more African Americans are, you know, aware of credit unions and that we have more as members and um, as employees. Um, one of the things that you guys talked about is just being visible and one was being in the community. Is there, is there anything else that we could add to that? Because I, I think what we're talking about is so very, you know, important. Anything else, uh, Lisa, or anything else that either of you guys? Yeah, you know, I think that that's because of my background being human resources, you know, we're always trying to get good people in the organization. And there are good people out there that just don't know about us. And I do think right. that being out in the community and going to places where, and actually posting positions um, at places where, you know, African-American and minorities are, it's so key, but it's, that's only half of it. I think that we have to use our resources as well anymore when you go to um, search engines such as LinkedIn, a lot of times you can see people's picture and start to source people from that perspective as well, because they may not know about us. We know that people still think, a good amount of people still think that credit unions have something to do with the union, right? So there's just so many things that we just have to help 
educate um, people about. And it's so funny because my husband is also in the credit union industry. And he shared that when someone first introduced him to the credit union industry, that he's like, well, you know, this is the image that I have. And I, you know, I don't, I don't really know that if that's on the path of what I want to do. Well, he just didn't know. And it's amazing how um, he's flourished in the industry since then. So I, I think that there is a lot that be, that can be done there. Just you know, sourcing people. And I, I think that um, Ashley mentioned about, you know, we, you know, if our, if our employee, minority employee base is a certain percent and our member base is that certain percent, then we're okay. And I, I would say, let's think a little bit broader than that. What is your community? Because the idea is, is that you're bringing more people in from your community. You have an employee base that actually matches with the community. So if your community is 20% African-American, that's the number that I'm searching for when it comes to those employees, because we've got some growth to do when it talk, when we talk about bringing members into the organization. Um, so just a slight change to, I think, the typical way of us thinking about, you know, our, our ethnicity within the organization, and maybe some slight changes that can make a big difference. Yeah, that is that is just excellent. Uh, thank you guys so much for sharing that. It it kind of um, and by the way, when you talk about the credit union movement and it's a well kept secret, is what I say sometimes. Uh, Seventeen years ago, when I uh, came to the league, I I didn't know what a credit union was. <laughs> so before I went on the job interview, I had to look that up and make sure I knew what it was. <laughs> and uh, here I am, you know, 17 years later. So um, I will agree to, to that statement that uh, we need to make sure more people know about us. Kind of like in the same uh, area of that, one of the questions was, um, where can other professionals go for more information about some of the things that we've been talking about? And even that last uh, question would be great if if uh, if you're watching this now, a credit union, and saying, yeah, we need to make sure that we uh, have much more diversity and that we look like our community, some of the things that you guys were saying. Um, is there any resources or any place that you would point um, any of these uh, professionals if they're looking to set some of those goals and, you know, um, and reach those? Any idea on that? Ashley, you're shaking your head, so I'm going to go to you first. <laughs> well, I kind of I kind of gave a shameless plug earlier about the African American <laughs> Credit Union Coalition, and I, I gave the acronym, so now I'll say it all the way out. But uh, that organization was formed to promote and strengthen um, the global impact of African Americans in the credit union space. And so I think it is, you know, absolutely a fantastic resource to go to first and foremost. Yes. And say, what are you doing and how can we get involved with you? Um, I think that our leads are great resources as well. We should definitely capitalize on what information is available there. There's a lot of local credit union um, activities that happen um, that I see often. And, and sometimes I'm like, gosh, I can't believe that credit union did that. Why didn't we think of that? And they're, you know, sometimes um, a fraction of our size, but their grassroots ability is really strong. Fight of reality, going into the schools and talking right there and saying, hey, this is sponsored by Credit Union Foundation. You don't even know about credit unions. Um, I think are really great tools and resources in order to be able to kind of close some of these gaps. Um, and provide resources for um, credit unions of any size to be able to participate in you know, share the, the good reasons of the media. That's excellent. Thank you. And I want you guys to know I did not pay Ashley to, uh, <laughs> to give a plug about the league, but thank you for uh, putting us in there. But those were excellent resources. I love that you're giving specific and anyone watching this can literally, you know, check into being involved in any of those. So I appreciate that. Um, Marvell, any um, any resources that you would recommend or that you use yourself? Well, I, I would say our business partners. Okay. Uh, we have to go to them for intelligence in areas that we don't have. 
And don't forget that that is a resource. So I always say, let's make, always do a plug for our, our um, business partners because they are part of our community and they make a difference for us. They speak the same language. Yes. So I think we have to remember that and look at ourselves as the mentors, do the mentorships because that's another way of, I'll say partnering with society or communities as a whole is because we're giving out, I think, great details, information as far as not just the movement, but you're trying to move a generation forward. So I always look at, I want to give back something every time. I don't want to sit back and say, and I like the phrase, we pay it forward, but maybe it's overused to a certain extent, because I like to get into, like you said, the more of the content of what does it take? What does a mentor really do? I like to plug aside that individual that's been sitting on the sidelines, but they didn't know that someone was watching. And it's talent that's out there that I think if we can bring that to each one of our organizations, because we do do it within my organization, uh, but it's to really offer those programs if you don't have them there. If you don't have the expertise, bring in an expert that would help you really put together what's a true mentorship program. Uh, it would be another way to uh, partner. And I did actually have the trade association. I think that you are the resources. You are the voices out there. Um, I totally agree with Ashley that you, you guys are making this possible too. So with your voices out there, I think is definitely um, showing the partnership. Thank you. I love the mentorship is a, is a big one. And I think something that we're all learning is uh, something that you brought up is that if you if you don't have it made and you don't you're not ready to execute it then go out and get help i mean that's sometimes the smartest way to do things thank you for sharing that and lisa anything you want to add on this one yeah you know it's so great that i think all of our answers are going to be so different on this one because i'm thinking a really great resource is the employees it's the people that we work with every day they are a wealth of knowledge through the communities that they're involved in outside of work. And all we have to do is just talk with them and ask and, and you know, find out what, who they think that would be good. If they're working there and they're happy, um, I think that would allow them probably to be able to stay longer as well when they know that there are other people that they know and that they work with. Um, and, and I think another part of that, kind of going back to my prior answer, if you're like, well, you know, I don't have that many minorities that are working or that many um, African Americans that are working, well, then get them, <laughs> you right. know, again, going back out and looking at the places within the communities and making sure that we're recruiting and we're sourcing from those places that are going to give us the people that we need to kind of make up that percentage and not just the percentage, but educate people about what credit is, are about and the careers that are available um, in those environments. So I, I definitely think that it's going back to our employees. And that says a lot when you say to that person, um, hey, you're a great worker and we're looking for more people like you to do a great job in our organization. Who do you know or where can we go to recruit to find more people? That's excellent. Uh -huh. That says a That's lot. Excellent. Wow, you guys just put together an amazing uh, list of resources. I'm frantically like jotting notes myself. So, and and I agree, all different uh, resources. So thank you so much, you guys, for um, uh, taking the time to really um, share that information. Um, I'm going to have one last question here. Um, and um, it's something that's interesting that I've been talking about even uh, with some of my groups and stuff is that during Black History Month, you normally do hear the same names over and over of our history makers um, uh, over the many years. And um, I love hearing those names, but we also know that we've contributed as um, Black Americans for hundreds of years in many different areas. And sometimes that gets lost. So is there anyone um, that you personally um, think of in Black history that you feel should be um, more talked about, more known and celebrated for their contributions? And um, I'll, I'll start out with you, Marvell, this time. <laughs> well, you know, this was kind of a tug of war of a question for me, <laughs> because first I have to um, homage to my parents. Ah. Excellent. Um, I have. I can't start or 
without saying that's why I'm here and what makes the difference in my life. So I have to celebrate them and acknowledge them for what they've done. And then on a couple of fronts, yes, there's a lot of individuals celebrated. Um, I had two, actually maybe three that came to mind. Uh, one was Michelle Obama. I know everybody knows her. They celebrate her. She's brilliant. Condoleezza Rice was another mm -hmm. one from where she's come from. And her, it it's, doesn't matter which side of the aisle. And the other one is Shirley Chisholm. Different activists. You wouldn't have believed that she was actually trying to become a president. I mean, there's just backgrounds that it gets kind of buried a little bit. But what I kind of liked about just thinking about those three and the one other person that I'll kind of quickly tie this in is Eleanor Roosevelt. One of the things when you think about empowering women, um, we have a first lady on two of the fronts. So we've got Michelle Obama was the first lady, Roosevelt, Eleanor Roosevelt. And what did they do to change our minds and our thinking? And we go way back from when Eleanor Roosevelt was trying to bring forward something that was controversial. She was looking out for those underserved individuals. And one of the things I could say all three or four of these individuals share is really kind of their quotes or what their thinking was, is was the success amongst ourselves. So I like the fact that they brought out on how do you improve your life through what you do? Don't go out and say, well, someone owes me something. Mm -hmm. The entitlements show up. Every one of these individuals ask me to do it. They're saying to look at yourselves and just determine how you could change and make a difference. And in Black History Month, I've said that it's one month, I say we celebrate so many things in our lives. And I'll say this is across all colors, is that there's so many things that everybody does throughout the time. But the essence of what we do, it shows up every day. And I think what we have to say is what we're celebrating people that have really made accomplishments in our lives and changed how we thought, how we think those individuals really do come to mind. And I don't want to leave out any, any males in this, um, you know, it might seem a little bit little, uh, slant, slanted in that direction. Um, but we broke a lot of barriers, Jackie Robinson. I mean, when we think about what barriers we all had to overcome, I think I like hearing the celebration of that, that reminder if there's others out there, which I'm sure we'll hear from shortly, but I'll tell you, those were true remarkable leaders. And that's who we are in this room is to say, we're leaders, we're, we're making a difference because they're hearing our voices. And I think it is all of the individuals out there that says, I could do this too, uh, in my own way. So I think it is finding my voice, your voices, and to say, how do we celebrate us? it's not just this month, it's every day, celebrate, bring something forward, um, because it is important to us. And, you know, with all of um, the power, I'll say, that's around us, and I think I like the fact that this is going to create a new network, Yes, that's what it's about. Um, also, I think it'll be a great message out uh, coming out from the league. Thank you so much. I agree, and thank you for um, sharing uh, uh, the uh, different uh, people in history. Really appreciate that. Um, Lisa, any, yeah, any input well, on that one? It, it, I, I do. It, it, uh, it was a great kind of question to think about because there just are so many really great people out there. But I settled on the late, great Maya Angelou. Mm -hmm. And the reason I did is that when I look into her past, to me, she is the epitome of evolution. Uh, she's well known for her poetry and, and maybe reciting that poetry during the Bill Clinton inauguration. But when you really kind of think about and, and read about her past, she had a very troubled childhood. And she even dabbled in some, you know, pretty unsavory professions. Um, and she could have stayed in that place and allowed her troubled past to define her, but she evolved into something that was so much greater. You know, we also know that she was an activist and she was a writer and an actor and a professor. Uh, and to me, she's that inspiration um, that basically is a reminder of perseverance, that what you seek to achieve is what you become. And very similar to what Marvel was saying, is that we can 
make excuses for ourselves all the time. It's really easy to do that. It is really easy for us to feel sorry for ourselves based upon certain circumstances that happen or don't happen in our life. But when I look at people like Maya Angelou, it just reminds me that mentally we can prepare ourselves for whatever we want in our future. And we don't have to become the victims of maybe things that we have gone through. We can get past that mentally, professionally, spiritually, whatever it takes for us to do that. And so um, I think I find her very inspirational um, for those reasons, because we all have that challenge at times. Yes, definitely, definitely. That is great. And I do love her too, but you've just even expanded that even more. So um, I, I appreciate that. Excellent, excellent choice there in a person. Um, and Ashley, I'm not going to forget about you. <laughs> Thank you. You know, just similar to Marvel, this was really hard for me to settle on right. who do I talk about because we have such a rich history. And I settled on two persons instead. Okay. <laughs> um, nice. and, um, so the first was Sir John Truth because she's someone that is kind of talked about a lot, but not so much. People don't really dive into who she truly was as um, a, a historical figure. And, you know, she was a, a human rights activist. She was a women's rights activist. She was a stout abolitionist. Um, but she has amazing quotes. And if you know me, you know that I love quotes. Yes. I have a list of quotes everywhere. Um, and I have a lot of circular truth quotes. And one of them says um, about her escape in particular, I did not run off. For I thought that would have been the with me. But I walked off believing that to be all right. And it's so profound to me. Um, she's also famously known for saying, ain't I a woman? <laughs> and I have that written on, <laughs> on my screen, ain't I a woman? Because to me, it just says everything. And Black women experience a lot of discrimination. And we get it on both sides, right? Because we are Black and we are women. And so um, it, it's just such a profound question, rhetorical question um, that I, I wanted to leave with you today. And then my second history maker is Amanda Gorman. Um, and I know that she's young, <laughs> the youngest inaugural poet to, to be specific in U.S. history, which kind of um, connects her to Maya Angelou, who I also love. Um, she's an award-winning writer. She's a graduate of Harvard University. But why I love her so much, and I try not to be a private about this, is her <laughs> courageous battle with her speech and faith. And it's because she inspires. I have a nine, almost 10-year-old who has a really bad step. And she loves Amanda Gordon for that reason because she's someone who has overcome her speech impediment. And now my nine-year-old believes that she can too. And so um, these two ladies, in my opinion, are a true definition of Black girl magic. And so that's why I shared those two ladies today. That is awesome. Um, I think there's a lot of people that don't even know that about Amanda Gorman. And <laughs> for anyone to get up in front of millions of people and um, read their um, their work like that is is amazing. And then that takes it even a step further. You guys pick such a, a variety and such great people. I'm honestly can't stop smiling because this whole uh, conversation has been extremely, um, you know, kind of really uplifting and uh, motivating just hearing from uh, each of you. And I just, um, any last uh, thoughts or anything before um, I close it up? In fact, if if there's anything, this wasn't one of the questions, so I'm going to throw it out there. And if you don't want to answer, um, no problem. But is there anything special um, for Black History Month that um, your credit union or you do personally that you'd like to share? 
Oh, I will share. Again, I'm very new to this credit union, but I have to tell you that historically, one of the things that we we uh, have I've been I've been a part of in the past is to find some of those wonderful facts to be able to share it with people, to be able to make um, an interactive exercise out of it so that people kind of do their own research a little bit and kind of try to answer the questions that we have. And I love that because not only is it fun and not only do people get rewards for it, but they get to, um, they get to, to, to learn something that maybe they just didn't know. And I think that anytime we have people kind of you know, kind of searching through the facts and, and uh, participating that way. Uh, I, I just think it's a wonderful thing. And I, I can't wait to be able to embrace that here where I am. That'll be my goal. Nice, nice. Excellent. That does, that sounds uh, really fun. And as you said, um, educational. Uh, thank you, Lisa. Um, any, uh, Ashley or Marvell, anything that you'd like to share? Yeah, um, so what we do is we are celebrating um, a Black History Month. So our credit union is celebrating that. It's a big deal for us. Mm -hmm. So we have gone out to our individual staff members and making certain that their voices are heard. So we're asking for stories, things in the community that they're doing. So we do a lot of outreach. So we want to know what you're doing and, and let them know we're that important. That's important to us too. And how could we also support your efforts? So staff gets to give their voices, you know, in a video, you know, oh, nice. what is so exciting about your life? What are you doing? So we're doing that. And we post that, of course, on our website and all, but the staff gets to have a voice here. So of course, they're going to be excited to see this as well, being added to that, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and we do a lot with DEI. Uh, there is not, uh, and I'm so impressed with this, there's not um person in this credit union that does not feel they have a voice that they don't have a voice we bring it forward we want to know from the individual department managers what what's what's going on what makes what makes you tick does this work well for you we put them all together in a senior management team meeting we literally brought our middle managers to an off-site meeting for two days and we said we, your voices are important you're our future so i think our giving back and those voices that are so important, because we can't say we always get it right from different levels, you know, is to hear, I always want to know, we could be missing something. So that we do bring forward on a regular basis. So I'll tell you, I'm so proud to be part of the credit union uh, for California Credit Union and part of the movement, because I think we're changing lives every day. So I like that we're doing it. And we do it for all the different um, um, months of celebrations from, you um, Cinco de Mayo to um, indigenous people. We just, we go across the spectrum. So it doesn't just stay with just one group. So I like that diversity and just celebrating each other. Oh, excellent. Mm -hmm. That is excellent. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. And I can tell that you're excited about it. that. Is, that's excellent. Yeah, Thank it's fun. That. Work, yeah. Anything to add, Ashley? I, I love what I've heard um, and we'll certainly take some things away. And one of, we also are on a diversity, equity, and inclusion journey here at our credit union. And we are just at the precipice of it, but that's when um, a lot of change is possible. One of the things I love to do is to storytell. And I think that, you know, unfortunately, that was one of the things that we lost in this 400 year journey we've been on as African Americans. And one of the reasons why I like to go to the East Coast because there's so many stories and so much history on the East Coast and down South that being born and raised in LA, I don't have that same experience. Because, mm -hmm. And I know LA has some stories, but we don't talk about them. <laughs> um, like you hear when you go um, to other places. So I try to take advantage of that culture of storytelling in my family and with um, the leaders that I am around here at the credit union, sharing fun facts and things that they don't know. And I think um, I will definitely take Lisa's idea of allowing them to go on that journey for themselves and to, um, instead of giving it to them, entice them to go and find the answers. And I think that they will get even more out of it. So um, thank you for sharing what you both have shared today, because it certainly has inspired me to do some different things than what I was doing before. 
Thank you so much. Uh, thank all of you, um, Lisa. Thank you, Marvell and Ashley. Um, I, once again, I got more out of this than I ever expected. So I'm excited because I know that um, everybody that um, gets to share in this is going to take away um, many ideas um, and thoughts um, as well. So thank you so much.